Okay, so for the FOS sliding, okay, to get the factor of safety due to sliding uh, activity, so what we have here is the sum of horizontal resistant forces to sliding and the sum of horizontal forces due to the force that cause a sliding. So here what we have is the equation, so V is the forces, that tangent with the delta, delta is the friction between the concrete and soil, and plus with the 0 0.5 passive pressure divided by the P active. Alright. Okay, so again, alright, uh, the, the forces that will cause wall to sliding is due to the uh, lateral pressure from the active Alright, so the rest of it is will try to resist from the wall to slide. Okay, so here again, we, we actually referring to the same table. Okay, we are actually referring to the same table, but here we only focusing on the column of force here. Alright, so why I make it black here just to show to you. Okay, that I don't want to, you to confuse. Alright, so remember that for the overturning, we will consider until the moment. Alright, but then for the sliding, we will due to the forces here. Alright, so what we have here, alright, we will look at this uh, column. Alright, so we have the uh, forces due to the returning wall and also due to the backfill material here. And uh, if, if we have the passive part, okay, so we, we need to calculate the passive part again until the part of the passive pressure, okay, alright here until at this column. All right, and then uh, we times with zero point five here. Okay, so you will have the forces that will stabilize from the uh, sliding, and then uh, the force the force that will cause the wall to slide is from the active pressure. Yeah. Okay, again, if you have surcharge here, if you have surcharge here, so again, you need to consider the surcharge at the back here. Alright, so you need to consider the surcharge. Alright, so in this case, since there is no surcharge, so only due to the uh, this uh, only triangle shape, Okay, but you have the surcharge, you need to consider the surcharge. And then for the delta, alright, for the delta, as you can see here, it's actually, it has the range, is from uh, angle of friction divided by 2 until to 2 over 3 angle of friction. Okay, um, normally we go for angle of friction divided by 2. Alright. Okay, and then once you have all the information, okay, so you can calculate the FOS for sliding. Alright, if you have inadequate, maknanya unsafe condition, so what you need to do, whether whether you increase, you increase the base of the uh, returning wall, okay, alright, or you use the base key here, alright, so... By using the base key here, what you have is actually you increase the passive resistance. Alright, so you need to get, you need to calculate the passive part until the depth of the uh, end of the uh, base, shear base key here. Okay, at the end of the base key here. Alright, so this is how we improve the factor of safety. Okay. And then for the bearing capacity, alright, so we must ensure that the uh, foundations of the wall, alright, the foundations of the wall must design it to satisfy the ultimate state in terms of the bearing. Okay, so the maximum pressure usually occurs beneath the toe. Okay, and this value maximum must not exceed the allowable bearing capacity. Alright, this max here must not exceed the allowable bearing capacity. So, the distribution of the ground bearing pressure can be in a trapezoidal or triangular shape. So, how we determine that one? 
So first and foremost, you need to determine the positions of x. So how to get this x is the m stability minus m overturning and divide by the total forces. So we have the x value. So we need to locate the eccentricity. Alright, what is the uh, locations of the eccentricity? So this is the equations of the eccentricity that the b is the size of the base. Alright, so this is the b. Alright, this is the b. Okay, so b over 2 minus with x. So look at what is your value. Alright, if you have the e is less than b over 6, so the distribution will be trapezoidal in this shape. Alright, so if you have the e again, alright, less than b over 6, okay, so you will have the distributions of the bearing ground bearing pressure is in a trapezoidal shape. But if you have the E is more than B over 6, you will have the triangular distribution pressure. Okay, like this. Alright, so now in this case, alright, so what we have here is that E less than B over 6. Alright, so you will have this kind of distribution pressure. So... At this point, this is the Q max. So what we want to calculate here is the Q max. Alright, so this is the equation to get the Q max. Alright, so this is the forces that we get from table in the sliding part. Alright, and then this is the base size. And again, just, just substitute this equation. Okay? 6, this is the... Uh, from the sliding forces and then this is the eccentricity E all right and then it is the B over square so this is the value all right okay so then we need to compare what is the Q ultimate or Q allowable for bearing capacity of the soil all right with the Q ground bearing pressure that we just calculated all right so if the q ultimate is not given all right there is no information so what we can do here we can use this equation but then we ignore the depth of the uh, embankment part eh? kita ignore this part all right so this basically is uh, established from the bearing capacity of foundation all right so when you use this equation we only take this part but then remember if you have the c value cohesion so we need to consider the cohesion by referring to the angle of friction okay for example in this case the angle of friction is 40 all right so you will have the value of nc is here and n gamma is here if you want to use that value all right so in this case that the c equal to zero so you can ignore this one all right and also we ignore this part so what we have here is only this part half times with b gamma n gamma so referring to 40 degree angle of friction so the n gamma is 95.5 and the b is 5.2 the gamma unit weight is 20 so you can get the q ultimate or q allowable is here all right so when you have the q allowable compare with the q maximum or divide by the q maximum that we have so this is the value of the f or s normally it is uh we need at least minimum three so if you have more than three so consider it is safe all right the maximum ground pressure is less than the q allowable all right so this is how we identify the factor of safety for the bearing capacity the q maximum the q bearing pressure must less than the q allowable all right